Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of One More Barlow, One More Beer, episode three. Featured beer of today is Bale Breaker Hazy IPA. Uh, they are located in the Yakima Valley, eastern Washington. This is a 6.2 by volume and 40 IBUs. They grow their own hops. Pretty good beer, if you like hazies. They're kind of a juicy IPA, not too bitter. Today we are going to go over Frost Cutlery Barlows. I was going to do a video on budget Barlows, but I have so many of them. Um, I figured I would just focus on Frost brands. And Frost has multiple brands. They have the Okoe River. This is also an Okoe River. They have the Steel Warrior. Uh, this is an Okoe River. This is called the Caliber. They also have another Caliber and Brambone with a, a spear point blade. Uh, they have plenty of other brands. Let me think of one. Uh, Whitetail. I don't know if they make Barlow's. But, uh, so I guess they're all under the Frost Cutlery umbrella. And Frost Cutlery, I don't want to get into history too much, but it was started by Jim Frost on the East Coast. And uh, he started collecting knives in 1969 and was selling them out of the back of his car at work. And he went on to start this multi-million dollar company. And they're the budget line for sure. Like, most of these are from 9 to $12.00. You can find them uh, any number of places. Um, Atlantic Knife. Chicago Knife Works is where I got most of these. Because they were such a good deal. And they recently went on sale. So they were in the $9.30 something cents range. So what started me off on this is I, I wanted to see what their, their ox horn was like. And this is what it's like. It's pretty translucent. You can see the pins through there. The back side. They have these really nice big bolsters. They vary in size from, I think, right around 3 and a quarter to 3.88 inches closed. And granted, they're not Rough Rider quality. The pins are very flush. You feel a little bit of transition here. But they have these really nice, clean, unstamped front bolsters. Let's look at the back spring here. I see a little minor gapping right here. Nothing more than just an average Rough Rider. What blew me away though, and JB Big Red ADC would agree, I actually had this knife on me when I went and saw him, so I had to show him. This one has a half stop. The pull, and I'll just shut up for a second so you can listen to the walk and talk. Now this is like rose craft, not rose craft, craft quality, but the pull is six, seven. Uh, kind of a recurve to the grind here, and obviously not the best grind, but freaking ten dollars, ten eleven dollars. I was pretty impressed. Especially JB when he pulled this pin blade out. He was like, wow, it's got a pull. It has got a really nice pull and snap. Let's see if I can listen to that. So, yeah, I had this one. I'm like, are they all like this? So I got a few here to show you really like this one and of course after I showed it originally they're sold out so I don't know if uh, people flocked to there to buy them or if they just had only a couple left in stock this is the buffalo horn it looks pretty much just black not a lot of translucence to it you can see some grain in there again really nice back springs 
can see ever so slight gap here. Nothing to be worried about. Same pole. Again, this is the Okoe River. Now the snap back isn't quite as good. Well, the pen blade is. But maybe it just needs to break in a bit. I cleaned them out. Lubed them up. Now, uh, buffalo horn comes in many varieties. And, I mean, it's obviously not... And you don't know what you're going to get. Like, some have a lot of character to them, some don't. I mean, it's nothing like this Arthur Wright and Son buffalo horn that I got. Where you get the white in here. I'm not comparing this knife. I'm just comparing the buffalo horn. I will show this another time. But yeah, this would be really cool to have buffalo horn like that. But a lot of the Chinese buffalo horn, it kind of just looks like black plastic. Whether or not it is buffalo horn or not, I don't know. Could be. Maybe just dyed black bone. So this is the uh, Steel Warrior. This is the Mardi Gras. Look at it sparkle. I'm not a big fan of purple. Actually, I hate purple. But you can see it's got a lot of green in there. And the pictures don't do it justice. The pictures do not show that purple. This one, again, back spring's really good. Maybe a hair gap. Like, I'm getting nitpicky. I mean, this was $9 and 30 something cents and the bolsters are all clean no stamping but you do see little specks and scrapes I want to take some case paste to it shows a lot of fingerprints uh, this one has a match strike pole you can see steel warrior stamped on the tang there I don't know if it's quite as good as the Okoe River, but I'm sure these are all just made in the same factory. Yeah, and this pen blade, the snapback, just not quite as good. But decent for $9. A nice little sparkly fishing lure of a Barlow. Uh, this is another Okoe River. Or Kui, excuse me. This is the Blue Pickbone. I was really impressed with this. Actually, I forgot to oil this up. You can see a few dry spots down there. But, uh, yeah, uh, the, their blue bone is hit or miss. Whoa, did something fall out of there? Their blue bone is hit or miss. Like, it can get white. Oh, look at that. The badge fell out. Well, I got something to glue. I guess that's what fell out. I think it's funny that it happened on the video. That's how well their glue sticks. I'll put that aside. So I guess that's something to be aware of when you buy a nine dollar knife. Badge could fall out at any time. You lose it, you're screwed. That's pretty funny. Definitely budget knife. I'll have to include this on my budget knife video. <laughs> Uh, decent walk and talk though. I like that they have a half stop. A lot of uh, Rough Rider Barlows don't have half stops. Good pull. These are uh, all 440A stainless. But look out for those uh, badges. They just might fall out on you. <laughs> oh, it deserves a sip of beer. And the last here was the Caliber. It's a black pick bone. Uh, I th it's a little bit longer. I think this was a 4.88. It's not that much longer. I don't have a measuring to really measure it. But this one, you can see that the main blade is on the back side here. This has mass strike poles. A little bit quieter of a walk and talk. Not as stiff as the Okoe River, but a good, it's at least a five and a half pull, maybe more. I'm not an expert on these things. But you notice the pen blade, actually I didn't show the pen blade on any of these. They're all the same except 
on the caliber it's a little different so the pen blades on the back side here and you can see different shape different size the caliber is a smaller pen blade uh, this has nothing stamped on the tang it says 440 stainless right here and this says steel warrior right here I think I already showed that but um, yeah uh, after I posted my uh, a video and bought a few of these. Yeah, a lot of them went on sale. I wasn't going to buy so many, but a lot of them went on sale. They're mostly like $9 and 30 something cents. Great little Barlows. Uh, for beaters, I mean, I'll take them to work. can play around with sharpening on these, and I'm not really out anything. A lot of these covers are really cool. But be warned, just like this, they use cheap glue, and it falls out. Now, this is bone, and it could have shrunk over time. And that could be one of the reasons. But I usually just grab a little, little dab of, a uh, little dibble dab of Gorilla Glue. And, uh, that works pretty good. Or Super Glue, whatever you like. So thank you again for joining me for another episode of One More Barlow, One More Beer. Uh, I will be posting my giveaway video. Actually, I've already posted it. I'll be doing the giveaway, I'm thinking, tomorrow. So good luck, everybody, for the Rough Rider Black and Blue Granddaddy Barlow. Have a good night.